A warm greeting, today is Friday, April 12, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. On April 11, NOAA published an update on the ENSO conditions, indicating that the El Niño phenomenon continues to weaken in the Pacific region. In this video, I would like to talk about what we can expect during the upcoming weeks as the hurricane season approaches. Remember that it officially begins on May 15 for the Eastern Pacific region, and on June 1 for the Atlantic region. You know that it is anticipated that the La Nina phenomenon will be developing during the summer and will be present for the peak of the season. I will also discuss a bit about the effects caused by the La Nina phenomenon and how this can contribute to the development of more tropical systems. Remember that all forecasts continue to indicate that the 2024 hurricane season will be hyperactive in the Atlantic. Firstly, due to the very warm waters prevailing in the tropical Atlantic region, and very favorable conditions that may result from the development of the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific. As you must know, we have been monitoring the equatorial Pacific region for several months to track the evolution of the El Niño phenomenon which remains active. However, you know that it has been weakening considerably since the beginning of this year. In fact, during the last seven days, we have observed that the waters in the equatorial Pacific region have been cooling. This continues to be an indication that El Niño is weakening, and that neutral ENSO conditions are likely to develop over the next month before La Niña develops. These blue colors on this graph represent ocean surface temperatures that have been cooling over the past seven days. Very importantly, in the latest ENSO update, according to NOAA, neutral conditions are expected to develop during April, May, or June. It is highly probable that between June, August, and September, we will see the development of the La Nina phenomenon. In this latest update, NOAA has increased the chances of La Nina developing to 60% just before the peak of the season. This represents a significant risk for the development of tropical systems in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and the rest of the Atlantic. If we look at an animation of the equatorial region of the Pacific towards ocean depths, you can see how temperatures remain below normal just below the surface. These cooler than usual waters will gradually continue their movement towards the surface, which will pave the way for the development of La Nina, characterized by cooler than usual waters in the region near the equator in the Pacific. Remember that ENSO is a natural process where the equatorial Pacific region warms and cools in different years. Typically, each period lasts between one and a half to two years. You can see that after the presence of La Nina for approximately three years, during 2023 we saw the development of the El Nino phenomenon represented by these red colors. As this is a cycle, and as history has shown, typically when we have a strong El Nino phenomenon, there is a high probability that La Nina will develop during the next year. That is precisely what we anticipate during 2024. Unfortunately, just before the peak of the season. If we review why the La Nina phenomenon increases cyclonic activity in the Atlantic, first, remember that when we have cooler than usual temperatures in the equatorial region of the Pacific, that is when we have La Nina, it causes the shear winds moving over the Central America and Caribbean region to decrease. This leads to more favorable conditions for the formation and strengthening of tropical cyclones. However, when we have the El Nino phenomenon, as we did last year, the opposite occurs, where surface ocean temperatures in the equatorial Pacific region warm, leading to an increase in shear winds over the Caribbean and Central America. This hinders the strengthening and formation of tropical cyclones moving through the Caribbean. Know that during the 2023 season, although it was a more active season than usual, the shear wind was protecting much of the Caribbean, Central America, and Mexico. Unfortunately, it seems that this year, with the La Nina phenomenon, we will not have that protection we had during 2023. Another factor by which the La Nina phenomenon favors cyclonic activity in the Atlantic is that when we have cooler than usual temperatures in the Pacific region, it causes air to descend from higher levels of the atmosphere. This creates rather dry and stable conditions on the surface. Therefore, this usually suppresses cyclonic activity in the eastern Pacific, while in the Atlantic, the opposite occurs, where ascending air in the atmosphere is favored leading to low pressures on the surface and instability that aids in the formation of tropical cyclones. Whether from tropical waves coming from Africa or from any low-pressure system finding favorable conditions for strengthening. In fact, this effect is magnified when we have such warm temperatures in the tropical Atlantic, as we are seeing this year. Temperatures are at record levels for this time of year. Furthermore, when we evaluate history, we see that the western region of the Caribbean, Central America, and the Gulf of Mexico are usually at greater risk when we have the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific, while the opposite occurs with El Nino. As shown in the following animation, observe the hurricane tracks during years of the El Nino phenomenon, and compare them with years of the La Nina phenomenon. You can definitely see that there is a significant difference, where in El Nino years, the number of hurricanes dramatically decreases in this region of the Atlantic, while in La Nina years, 
the risk for land regions increases. This is unfortunately a major concern, especially for the Gulf of Mexico, Central America, and the eastern region of Mexico, where they are at a higher risk of experiencing the impact of a tropical cyclone. Similarly, the Caribbean region also experiences an increase in cyclonic activity in La Niña years compared to El Niño years. The following graph also shows us cyclonic activity measured in accumulated cyclone energy. It turns out to be higher in years with neutral or La Niña conditions, significantly more active than years with the El Niño phenomenon. In summary, we continue to see how the El Niño phenomenon weakens in the Pacific region. It is likely that during the next month, or before June, we will already have neutral conditions, followed by La Niña conditions for the peak of the season. The important thing is that we are preparing for this hurricane season, which, combined with the very warm temperatures in the Atlantic, promises to be very dangerous and active. Always remember to stay informed with hurricane info by clicking on the red button at the bottom of the video that says subscribe. Then click on the bell icon to receive notifications when we upload new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent day, so until next time.